Hey everybody, welcome back to Kumasau Reviews. What we're taking a look at is another one from Wave Corporation. This is their 148th scale AV98 Ingram Labor from Pat Labor. So, you should be familiar with the Mecca. If you've seen the series, if not, go ahead and Google it. But, really cool representation of it. This is the Ingram Alphonse, as seen in the show. This is the show color version. The company also has a movie colored version as well, and that's a little bit darker, um, has the black hands and whatnot. Pretty cool. So, this is approximately seven inches tall. It's seven and three quarters, actually, if you look at the larger antenna on the left hand side of it. But just to the head, I would say it's about six and three quarter inches tall. So, that's that. In terms of accessories, it comes with its revolver, shotgun, a variety of hands, as well as both an extended and retracted baton. It also has the dust cover version of the visor that can be swapped out. We'll go over the gimmicks and stuff like that as well. Now this is a die cast piece, mostly in the frame as well as these lower legs. It's a little bit harder to tell on this one which parts are die cast because unlike the Tetsuki Ocean, it actually has that thicker gloss coated paint job and things like that. Like you see on a lot of full die cast toys like those feature models and things like that behind it so this is really nice even though I don't believe it's as nice of a toy that's a Tetsuki Ocean the finish of it is much more impressive so has that high-end feel even though it's not as big of a toy so just looking at the details here zooming in good representation I like that they did the panel on it and things like that Turn this guy around. All right, and these pieces here are textured rubber. And it's good quality stuff too. I didn't see any worry about stretching, stressing, anything like that. No Mars on the rubber while playing with this. And it has pretty decent articulation too, which we'll go over in a moment. But before I forget, I do want to take a look at the gimmicks. So we're gonna zoom back in here. And I don't know how close I can necessarily get with this camera. We have to take a look at the back here. This cover comes off. All right, so the first gimmick is going to be this lever here. It's an up and down lever right there. I think I have to go above. Yeah, and you can see Izumi, the pilot. Now, if you have it retracted, see how it slides down, you can also open the cockpit here, that, and this bottom piece, and although you can't see the full pilot, you can see him riding inside there, so, pretty cool stuff, nice detail into it, and it's nice because even the pieces that these slide on and whatnot, it's well made. Nothing feels like it's going to break. No small little fragile pieces and stuff like that while you're playing with the gimmicks. And I believe this released around 2008, 2009. So for an older toy, I mean, it looks, feels, and plays like new. It's really cool. All right, now we're going to go back to the back. There's a button here, actually. Now, between the paint and I'm sure it being a little bit older, I haven't gotten it to work a hundred percent. Actually, did I just do it? Yes, I did. So I lied. What I did there with that button was pop out the lights. Yep, and they actually popped up all the way this time too. So maybe it just took a little bit of play. Zooming back in. There we go. All right, and you just pop them back down with your fingers, but giving it one more try. There we go. You even hear a little pop there, which is cool. I'm going to call an audible here. While we're at it, we might as well take a look 
of that dust cover visor too. Now this piece, it definitely doesn't feel frail or anything like that, but it is small, so you know, handle with care. And this is a pretty rare figure, so it's not like you just buy a new one or contact the retailer or anything like that for a replacement, so. It's a good version of that look too. There we go, there are the gimmicks. Okay, and now we'll look at the articulation and the accessories. He does have the riot shield, it does not come off. But one thing that's cool about the riot shield is you can't see it because of the darkness in there, but there is a female peg hole for the retracted baton to go inside. Goes in, holds by friction, holds in very well. Now looking at the articulation, I actually wanna zoom into the head there because this is probably the only thing I really don't love about the figure. So you've got that rubber there. Pop that piece back on. That has not happened once, but of course. While you're reviewing, the fun comes out. You've got that rubber, and I'm just going to use the baton. Alright, so you've got the rubber there. And it just doesn't go down what I feel is far enough. It should go well inside of this trap area kind of deal. But instead, it ends, in the front at least, right there. And we'll look at the head articulation. So it's visible. He's got a decent up and down movement. But you see on this side, it started to pop out. And this piece holds on by friction. Holds on all right, but it's not really made for play. And make sure to hold that in. But see how it comes out? It's not hard to pop back in, but I mean, if you've got like a side head pose and things like that, that's just not a good look to where I feel like if it was just plain longer, you wouldn't even have that problem because it wouldn't come out. It goes back in easy enough like you saw, but just something that I found a bit annoying. Alright. So these shoulder pieces have a bit of separate articulation, but they're not like, let's say, a metal build where you could just take it, put it over here, rotate it around, and things like that. It's attached on here somehow. I can't exactly see inside of there to know because there's actually a cover piece of plastic that blocks you from viewing that. Really good attention to detail there. But taking a look. I don't want to stretch the rubber too much, but it looks like it has full 360 degree articulation. All right, now in terms of outward, and you see the rubber's not blocking it. The shoulder pad just plain blocks the arm from going out parallel. It's what it is. All right, single jointed elbows, 90 degrees. Waist articulation. The cockpit is blocked by this hip skirt area, crotch plate. So it doesn't do a full 360, but there's that. All right, get arm out of the way. All right, front swing, back swing. Double jointed knees. Outward, you can probably tell the hip armor's not going to really let it go out. The ankles actually extend outward for more ankle tilt, which is cool, but not a lot. All right, let's check out the feet. Now, this back part of the foot goes in and out. And the front part can go in, but not upwards. So no foot movement or anything like that to help it with walking poses and whatnot. So just something quick. Get that out. And we'll take a look at the baton hand here. Now 
Now the baton does have an extra peg in it that's supposed to go inside of the hand here. This is the first time I've used it, so let's see how easy that is to put in. I'm gonna say not very, but got it. All right, there's that. And I forgot, the right arm does extend there. Nifty feature. You can see the wrists are just on ball joints, really small ball joints. I think smaller than they need to be. I know it's not the biggest figure, but geez. Do something quick. Okay, now we'll take a look at the revolver here. Okay, no pegs inside of the hand or anything like that. It's simple. And there is butterflying of the shoulders. Now one thing that's cool about the revolver, and not just is that it can actually store inside of the leg there. And let me see. It's a bit dark. But there's a compartment in there. Let's see if I can't light it for you guys. And it's shaped like the revolver itself. So that piece actually rotates. So just remember that it's supposed to, the handle of the revolver is supposed to face towards the back of the leg. So in case it gets rotated around, mine actually came rotated around. I don't know why. All right, so I've got that piece slid in. Just wanted to show you guys how it's supposed to look. Like I said, it's a dark area and dark gun. So not much I can do in terms of lighting there, but just kind of get it adjusted so that it can close around and it shall. Getting the light back up and that leads us to our last weapon. Big ol' hardy shotgun.
There's the camera up on there. And there we go. Again, this has been the Wave Corporation. WAM, which stands for Wave High Advanced Model. 148 scale, AV98, Ingram Labor. This is the Alphonse, piloted by Izume from Pat Labor. I don't have any other uh, Ingrams to compare it to, like the CMS, Yamato, and things like that. This is actually my first, so I'm really excited, so there's a little bit of bias towards that, but it's a pretty solid darn toy. It doesn't have that wow centerpiece, like, you know, holy shit, blah blah blah, feeling that the Tatsuki Ocean did, but at the same time, it's another solid offering from this really, really, really slept on unknown company. It's crazy. So anyway, this has been another Kumasawa review. Stay tuned for the full breakdown article and gallery on kumasawa.com. As for this review, like, share, subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.